Hello and welcome to Brooks TV. I'm Amy Jones. I'm Jessica Beaton. We've got a jam-packed show for all of you lucky students watching today. Let's see what's coming up. A special insight into classical contemporary music. Guided tour of weekly community. And a short animation by Paul Pike. So Jess, how was your New Year's? What did you do? Well, you know, I did the usual thing and I went to a house party. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. I had a little shindig with the family, so oh, that was nice as well. Yeah. yeah, any New Year's resolutions? Well, as it's a new year, fresh start, you know, I thought I'd, my New Year's resolution would be something like, just say yes. Just say yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so, you know, if anything, someone says, oh, Jess, do you want to go out for dinner? Yes. Someone says, do you want to jump off a cliff? Well, I wouldn't say yeah, but... Well, we I don't condone it. that, no. no. <laughs> but that, that's good, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, speaking of New Year's, for all you single people out there, there's still hope of celebrating something on the 14th of February. Yes. Chinese New Year is almost upon us. I'm not sure about you, Amy, but I don't really know much about it. So let's get our resident expert, Fergus Ko, to tell us more. What did I say? Most of you must know this word. We always say it on Chinese New Year. But what does it mean? Why did I say that? Because Chinese New Year is coming. And the word I said means, May wealth be with you. In the near future, we'll have a very special Chinese New Year. As I'm a Hong Kong student, for me, 14th of February is not only the Valentine's Day, but also the Chinese New Year. In fact, over the past decades, this happens rarely. Only in 1995, the festive Valentine's Day was on the same day as the Chinese one, which is on the 15th of Chinese New Year called Lantern Festival. So how will the students from Hong Kong celebrate this special Chinese New Year? This year, I will go to visit my relatives to make some Chinese traditional food together. Something like Tang Yuan and eat some melon seed. I'm going to wear new clothes and new shoes because this is a Chinese traditional culture and um, it means everything starts from the beginning on a new year. I have decorated my room with some spring festival club hats and also I will eat some chocolate instead of the traditional Chinese New Year food. This is the same day with Valentine's Day, so I will go out with my boyfriend. According to an online survey conducted by ChinaNews.com, nearly 80% people think that Chinese New Year is more important and there are over 50% people decide to stay with their parents on that day. In Hong Kong, when we make New Year's visit to married families and say some blessing words to them, they must give us some red pockets, which contain New Year's money. Do you want to earn some easy money? Let's teach you some common Chinese blessing words in a Chinese way. Okay, the first one, Chut yap ping on. That means wishing you safety wherever you go. The next one is Sun Tai Gin Hong. That means be healthy all year. Last but not least, I wish all of you Ho Yip Mang Jun. It means wish you have great improvements on your studies. I'm Fergus Ko, Bruce TV. Gong Hei Fa Chai. Happy New Year. How do you say that, Jess? Kung Hai Fat Choi? Kung Hai Fat Choi. I give up. There's no hope for me. Right, time for something a little different, I think. Yes. Are you a fan of classical music? Are you a fan of contemporary classical music? Well, after all that difficult Chinese, sit back and relax and enjoy something different. Mm -hmm. 
in its most contemporary form, classical orchestral arrangements are pushing the boundaries of art and music. St Hilda's College Oxford played host of an event of such kind on a cold February evening in the thankfully warm Jaglin Debris Concert Hall, with students performing contemporary works by guest composer Gary Carpenter and student Gavin Higgins, among others. Brooks TV was their first hand to witness this ever-evolving art form and touch on the reasons why classical music is still very much at the forefront of the artistic world. In some respects, classical art music has been and probably many years will be a relatively minority interest um, but that doesn't mean therefore that you don't aim in fact to write a kind of music which is going to have a communicative value so I mean I just thought the whole concept basically dealt with music which has a real direct mm. appeal you might have to work at some of it a bit but that actually is not a big deal you know you have to work at like in olives but you know okay. you do mm. I guess there's a lot of people out there who don't really um, know an awful lot about contemporary classical music and I suppose their preconceptions of it are pretty... I watched an interview just last night about... Um, well, it was a review, actually, of the Minor Tour by Harrison Birtwistle. And one guy, one guy... Have you seen this? No, no, no. One guy was saying, it's just not music, it's not music! And um, I don't quite know what he meant by that. If he meant there wasn't a tune or a melody or a harmony or rhythm, when he was wrong, it's just that you just have to listen to it in a different way. Classical contemporary music hasn't really experienced um, in relation to the other kind of art forms, so, you know, just, just art, contemporary art or contemporary literature or contemporary dance is a kind of a, a general public kind of um, uh, appreciation. I mean, if you say to someone, name me a contemporary composer, just any kind of Joe Public on the street, they wouldn't be able to, if you said name me a contemporary artist, Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin, blah blah blah. Yeah. Same with, with, with contemporary dance. And the, there is this kind of, like Gavin mentioned before, there's a, a, a preconception, um, preconceived notion about a contemporary music. That, that, and, and also about classical music itself. I mean, if you, you say classical music to some people and they think, okay, stuffy, kind of aristocratic, not really my thing. And you say contemporary music, and so it's that plus kind of really, really weird sounds. Yeah. But the, the, this is not the case at all, really. The thing about contemporary music, I feel, is the, the diversity, the, the ability to express yourself. You have a, a much more varied palette of, of orchestral sounds, rhythms, and there's, there's so much more to really experiment with. And, you know, one of the things I tried to do this evening was to program composers who, who you know, have their own individual voices and their own ideas about what music should be and how they want to express themselves through that. With education still readily available, affording a quality instrument is seen as the major hurdle, but with a huge selection of Far Eastern made instruments of very good quality available for music stores nationwide, you needn't spend a fortune on a quality instrument. This is Gavin Batty for Brooks TV. Ah, oh, that was lovely. I feel all calm and collected now. Like I could just sit in the bath and listen to that all day. Sit in the what? In the bath. The bath. You mean bath? Okay, let's not get accent prejudice, okay? Alright. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> L shall we uh, just finish the show there then, Amy, so you can get in the bath with your rubber duck? No, no, no. L no, we've got so busy. much more to come. No, we couldn't. <laughs> we haven't experienced the guided tour of Wheatley yet. Oh, of course. Now, Wheatley isn't our usual campus, is it, Jess? So really, no. we need this tour more than anyone. Check this out. 
Whitley, home to business, engineering and technology schools, place where hundreds of students travel to every day and spend at least three hours studying and socializing. To socialize, the business students have the Simon Williams building. This building has many computers, a coffee shop with nice food and confitures, and especially quality group workspace. I talked to Barry O'Donovan, Deputy Director of ASK. So, uh, the Simon Williams Undergraduate Centre is part of the ASK project, and ASK is a centre for excellence in learning and teaching at uh, Oxford Brooks, and which is focused on improving and sharing knowledge of assessment standards. So R stands for Assessment Standards Knowledge Exchange. We wanted to build a place, an affinity space, or a social learning space where students could come together and really kind of share, you know, sort of informal understandings, and feel, feel a real kind of sort of sense of belonging, you know, sort of feel very comfortable, and not only kind of sort of work and collaborate on their formal pieces of work, but also kind of sit and eat and chat over coffee about their work and about the experience of being a student. These students have their community space, why don't the others? I spoke to some of the technology and engineering students to find out their opinion if they would like to have one as well. Uh, yeah, I do, definitely. I would spend more time in Wheatley if there was a communal area here. Um, I feel it's a little bit impersonal at the moment. Uh, yeah, I do. Not only because it could mean I could socialise more, but it would help me get more work done. Yeah, I think that would be good. It means that we could all socialise together. Strong community is essential to help students progress in their studies. The real question here is why are some students are getting preferential treatment over others? Magdalena Kontner, Brooks TV. Wow, I feel like we've learned so much and we're only in the first half. Well, actually, Jess, it's time for a short break now, but you can catch up on every episode ever made by visiting btv.brooks.ac.uk. Remember, folks, there's no www dot, and you can also email us with stories, ideas, or it, just if you feel like joining us behind this desk and getting involved <laughs> at Brooks TV at Brooks. .ac.uk. And if you go to the website, you can also see our brand new face, uh, Facebook and Twitter updates. So you, be, you can become a fan on Facebook, and we've also got our status updates on Twitter. Now, I don't know about you, Jess, but I'm actually not a fan of Twitter. No, I'm a fan of Facebook, has to be said. Yeah. But no, I have never joined Twitter. I, yeah. I don't know. All right, we'll <laughs> see you after the break. <laughs> 